Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering new topics added for CCNA course 200-125, and this is section 3.3, spanning tree configurations. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain how switch stacking improves STP deployment. A switch stack can consist of up to nine Catalyst 3750 switches connected through the stack-wise ports. Now, with the stacks, stackable switches, is the, for example, 3750s switches, they have this port at the back. They can create like uh, illusion of one switch and you can connect up to nine switches in daisy chains. So you create switch one to connect switch one to two, from two to three, from three to four, and then back from four back to one. So it kind of kind of like a looped connection here. And all these four switches will behave like one switch. So uh, you don't have a problem with the, with the spanning tree anymore. You don't lose any ports in the front to connect to them. Like because to connect the switches, you're going to lose ports, you know, in the front. So one switch called the stack master controls the operation of the stack. The stack master and the, only, the other switches in the stack are stack members. Layer 2 and layer 3 protocol presents the entire switch stack as a single entity to the network. The master contains the saved running and running configuration files for the stack and each member has a current copy of these files for backup purposes. So every member is uniquely identified by stack own by its own stack number. The first number after the interface ta type is a stack uh, number. So for example, here we have gigabit one zero one for that's stack one one zero two is for stack one on the switch and then uh, two zero one is for stack is a switch on the stack two and so on. Switch stacks are managed using a single IP address. The same IP address is used even if the master or any other members from the stack is removed. All members are eligible masters. If the master becomes unavailable, there is automatic process to elect a new master from the remaining stack members. One of the factors is stack member priority value. The switch with the highest stack member priority value becomes the master. Spanning tree and switch stacks. Switch stacking also has the ability to add more switches to a single spanning tree instance without increasing the spanning tree diameter. In a switch stack, all switches use the same bridge ID for a given spanning tree instance. Diameter is the maximum number of switches that you must cross to link any two switches. Traffic going from a host connected to switch 1, 4, here, to a host connected to 3, 4, here, must cross 9 switches. So, so must cross 9 switches, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The IEEE recommends a maximum diameters of 7 switches for the default spanning tree timers because the, the root bridge is going to send a bridge a BPDUs every 2 seconds and then they're not going to get in time if, it's, if the diameter is more than 7 switches. So switch stacks help to reduce the impact of diameters on switch spanning tree protocol reconversions. Traffic going from a host connected to S14 to host S34 must cross three stacked switches. So one, two, three, and it goes to the destination. Thank you very much for watching. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe.